All right, guys. My name is Shai, and I am recording this on Sunday, July 31st, which makes this the weekly reading for the first week of August. And I have like 8,000 different things I could say. <laughs> I actually just spent about four hours this morning sitting on my couch just with my consciousness receiving like messages and activations and ideas and possibilities, potentials, like all the different things I could be doing. Um, and specifically for the purposes of this video, all the different videos I could make today. Uh, so, so many different ideas, all these things, I would, different things I want to explore. But um, it's like focus, focus, focus. <laughs> like focus here, Shy. Focus, focus, focus. Uh, it is Sunday. Sunday is when I have committed to doing these weekly readings for the year of 2022. So I am going to focus in on this week. I'm going to focus in on this week instead of spiraling out, out to the quantum wins. It's like focus on this week, focus on focus on just this week. Maybe that is relevant for many of you if you're if you're also feeling this like energy just spiraling out and spiraling in uh, out of nowhere. Um, so I do know that the sun is trying to Jupiter today, so that is part of this influence. So it's gonna that's gonna fade by the end of the week. <sighs> that's not the only thing that's going on here, but definitely definitely relevant this expansive Jupiter influence. Okay, and so the other thing I have to, I, I feel like I've mentioned this so many times, but it, it feels like it bears repeating one more time because this is one of the most significant challenges that I feel humans face on Earth, which, <laughs> I mean, that's a pretty over-the-top grandiose statement, and honestly, I'm gonna stick with it because that is how strongly I feel about this. So, I'm talking about, like, you know, feeling distracted by all of this information, all of this consciousness, all of this data, all of this, this downloads, all of these messages, right? Um, that's kind of on the, the abstract level, on, on the human level that is playing out on the Leo Aquarius axis, like I have said and said and said, right? It's, it's Leo season and Saturn is sitting opposite Leo over there in Aquarius. And to have Saturn like camping out in Aquarius, he is making, like, to me, one of the main things that Saturn does is puts weight on something that he wants you to let go of. So that's kind of counterintuitive. And I think this is why Saturn gets such a bad rep because people don't like that, right? People, when they, we misinterpret Saturn's help, right? He's trying to help us and we misinterpret it because he puts gravity on something. He puts weight on something. And when we feel that kind of gravity being placed on something, we think that that means put more attention on it and do more of that and focus on more of that. But really what Saturn is trying to get us to do is to let go of that thing. It's like he puts all our, he puts all this gravity on this thing and makes this thing really loud, makes it really heavy, makes it so it's really, really obvious to us. And for a while, we go through this process of trying to become more of that or trying to pay more attention to the thing that's becoming so obvious and so heavy. And so heavy, so heavy, Saturn will make it so heavy. And the thing is, eventually, Saturn makes the thing so heavy that you have to drop it. Like, you can't even help it. It's like, imagine carrying something. Maybe you can carry 10 pounds, 20 pounds, 50 pounds, 100 pounds. Maybe you're like a weightlifter and you can hold 200 pounds 300 pounds even but it's like eventually you're gonna drop it eventually it gets so heavy that you simply have to drop it that's what Saturn does and then finally it's like oh you never had to you never had to be carrying that all along you were supposed to drop it it became so heavy because you were supposed to drop it that, that's how Saturn that's how Saturn works so bringing this up like I feel like I've talked about this so many times but w when I get stuck in these loops of repeating myself that means that the the message like hasn't been received fully by someone who's meant to receive it so maybe some of you if you're like laughing because you've heard me say this so many times well then it, it's like if you already got the message then cool that this is not for you you're just like holding space for somebody else um but if like you're somebody somebody still needs to to like it's still waiting for this to click so this is still waiting to click for someone so i'm going to be transmitting this message repeatedly until it's clicked for everyone who sees my videos <laughs> so saturn sitting over there in aquarius is putting weight on essentially 
the collective consciousness, right? Aquarius things. And this can manifest in terms of the things that people say, the things that other people say, the opinions that other people have, other people's opinions, the things that they say about you, the things that other people say that you should be doing because Aquarius, I mean, Aquarius is so many things. This is not, this is not the totality of Aquarius energy. This is just one manifestation of it. Um, it can be like Aquarius can be the eyes of others. It's all the eyes that are looking at you, all the eyes that are looking at you. And when eyes are looking at you, they're looking at you with judgments and opinions about how you should live and what you should be doing. And so there's like all of this energy around you of other people's thoughts and other people's feelings, right? And other people's judgments and other people's opinions about how you should live, <laughs> how you should be, right? And you can be receiving these judgments from like literally from people coming straight up to you and telling you something about how you should do this. You can be receiving it from going on the internet and scrolling through YouTube and seeing a bunch of videos about like people telling you how you should be or this is the new best way to be, right? You can be getting it from anywhere and you can also be getting it from inside your own mind. And I think for most of you, this is where it's coming from. For sure you get those external reflections, but really, 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 you have thoughts in your head that are not really yours. You have thoughts in your head that are playing out. They're like self judgments. They are, they are your thoughts that tell you what you should be doing. Anytime you have a thought that's saying, I should do this, I should be better at this, I should feel guilty about that, I should do this differently, blah, 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 blah. All these judgmental opinions that are talking inside of your head, right? You know, when you got that stupid inner monologue saying, I should this, I should that, I'm bad at this, I feel guilty about this, I should be better at that, na 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 right? All of those thoughts that are attacking you. <sighs> Those are things like that. That's like heightened right now. This whole like two and a half year time that Saturn is in Aquarius that is being heightened. And it's like especially heightened right now in Leo season because like now your 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 main solar energy is in Leo, the self, the individual, the creative expression, the, the capacity to individuate and to shine. Saturn is sitting on the other side trying, highlighting all of this noise, highlighting all of this interpersonal and inner mental noise of should you should do this you should blah 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 all of those thoughts all of those opinions all of those judgments right so it's really 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 heightened and that can make life really unpleasant because it can feel like everywhere you go someone is telling you something that you should do or every time you can't even like listen to your own thoughts because your thoughts are attacking you with all of this stupid bullshit right and for and this is where we can get really out of balance. This is where we can get really out of balance because Saturn is putting so much gravity on all of these opinions and all of these judgments that you like we're all doing this to a certain extent, some more than others, but like I'm doing this too, everyone's doing this to some extent. We feel we we hear one of these thoughts or one of these opinions or one of these judgments, one of these should statements, and then we go, "Oh my god." that's truth that's I need to do that right we, we take these judgments seriously for for like maybe it's just a minute or maybe it's like a whole cycle of your human experience where you go I should feel bad about this and now then you start feeling really bad about this or I should do this and then you go and you do that like whatever it is but it, it's like no so <laughs> like I was saying it's like that is something that Saturn is putting weight on putting gravity into so that you can let it go so it's Don't pay attention to these thoughts, these opinions, these judgments, these should statements, these guilt things, whatever it is. Worries about what other people are doing. Worries about what other people are thinking. Worries about what other people are saying. It's like, yes, you might keep finding your attention going that direction. Yes, you might feel like there is truth in these statements, but but it's like your 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 attention is only being drawn there because you're eventually going to let that thing go. You're eventually going to let the thing go. You're eventually going to let it go. And the faster you let it go, the better you're going to feel. But this, is going, this isn't going to be like a one-time thing. You might have one big thing, like one big thing. Like maybe you feel really guilty about something and finally you go and you have a conversation with the person and then finally you, feel, you realize you never had to feel guilty and then you finally let that go. Like things like that can be really finally resolved. But what you're going to find is that there's just like this constant percolation and bubbling up and more of more and more and more and more and more of these opinions it's like people's opinions are never gonna stop they're never gonna fucking stop it's just like madness out there right everybody with all of their opinions it's never gonna stop and that's actually part of our training that's part of our training to learn to be able to exist 
as your yourself, right? To exist in yourself in the, the shit storm of other people's opinions. You have to exist as yourself in the center and in the eye of the hurricane, in the shit storm of everybody else's opinions. And that's that's what, what we're being trained into here. This is what we're practicing. So it's to find the neutral space in the middle, the neutral point in the middle, the middle of everyone else's opinions where you just where all of that drops away, all of that drops away, all of that drops away, and then you're just the shining sun at the center of it all. The shining sun at the center of it all. And now my cat is, my kitten is screaming from the other room. He's screaming his ascent because of course cats very, very closely connected to Leo energy, right? No. <laughs> cats don't give a shit, right? Cats don't give a shit what anybody thinks about them. They just do, they're doing them, they do their own thing, and they don't give a shit. And that is the energy that you, that will empower you in Leo season, right? <laughs> my sister was actually just over, and uh, we both have dogs, so I was taking my dog out, and I live in a big apartment complex, and, like, I, I went outside in my, like, really raggy old, like, pajamas, like, pajamas that, you know, I normally would not want to be seen in public in and she kind of was like you're really gonna take the dog out wearing those pajamas and I was like yeah like I don't I don't got time for this shit I, I'm gonna go out I'm gonna take my dog outside wearing like looking like anything I will look like anything when I go outside to take my dog out right it's like I don't I don't I don't, I don't have I don't have the energy to care about other people's judgments about what I'm wearing when I take my dog outside and I could tell like she she wanted she was like getting on board with that right she was like yeah like I, I like that that's a good that's a good vibe that's a good vibe I need I, she I could tell that she kind of wanted to be more like that but also that she was kind of a uh, not quite ready you know, <laughs> to like expose her pajamas to the world right so you can be in a process you can be in a process of this and just 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 keep practicing it like like practicing anything else that you practice it's a it's a practice that you have it's a practice that you have and this week in particular so I went on like a huge whole tangent that I did not know, I did not know I was going to be going on. Like I said, there's like 800,000 million different things I feel like I could talk about right now, talk about today, transmit today. So many messages from all different corners of the cosmos. And um, I didn't know that was going to be the one for this week. But there's also this thing about this week where this is like a, a cleanup week, a cleanup week, a cleanup and recalibration week, because it was just the Leo new moon. And of course, we're going to be heading up to the... Aquarius full moon, um, you know, in a couple weeks here, a week and a half or whatever, and Lion's Gate on August 8th, that big portal. So, but this week is a little bit of an in-betweener. It's an in-between week. And that's really good. That's really good because we could all use like a, like a minute. We could all use a minute to kind of catch, like it's like either clean up or catch up. Or maybe for some people it's both. Some of us have cleaning up to do. Like I actually had to... Um, like vacuum my carpet and wash wash my sheets before I as I do my these readings um almost I'm almost always recording them in my bedroom next to my bed and I was like I need everything clean before I turn on the camera I need clean energy for for the video so I had to vacuum the floor and clean the sheets and I did something very strange I I I uh oh out of character for me right out of character I um I don't this is how out of character it is. I can't even remember what it's called. I ironed. I ironed this cloth because I put it down and it was all wrinkly. And the thing is, as I'm sure you all notice, my videos, these cloths typically are wrinkly. As you can tell, like, you know, making things look really nice is not really my forte. I'm not like visually artistic at all. And I also just like don't notice things like wrinkles and I don't care about wrinkles. I've never cared about wrinkly fabric, but the moon is in Virgo right now. And I was like, I have to, I have to iron this. And it was really funny. I had to like go into my closet and find my iron because I've only used it like once in the 10 years that I've had it. So. <laughs> but I ironed today and does not look nice. Does not look nice. Thank you, Virgo, for inspiring me to iron this sheet. Um, yeah, so clean up. Or what was the other thing that I said? It was another C word. Clean up or... I don't remember now, but you guys know. You can you can turn back the, <laughs> the clock if you need to. Protection, 24. Let's see what else I pulled here. Kind of shifting gears. Let's get to the cards. Longing for home. We the Hathors. The Crowning. And Brothers of the Rose. 
this is super cool. This, especially following the message that I had just channeled, that's a turn, like that Saturnian message, right? This is a, like a shift in the energy because it's like, why are we cleaning up? Why are we cleaning up and like sh shifting this this energy? We're like making way for a much more supportive environment is what this is. We're making way for a much more supportive environment. <sighs> it's like whatever happened for you over the Leo new moon, but even stretching backwards all through cancer season and even like the last few months, this feels like a rather kind of large shift. A lot has been shifting out to... I'm like literally seeing like a round table, <laughs> a round table. But it's like before the round table was set, before the round table was, was ready for the collective to sit, right? Before the round table was ready for the collective. And now I'm getting massive shivers, right? Massive shivers. So this collective theme, this is going to be going all the way up through the Lionsgate portal and into the Aquarius new moon. Something is getting prepared for the collective. Something is getting prepared for the collective to come together. The collective, your collective, your collective, big emphasis on your collective. So there are many collectives, many round tables, and something is, it's like, it's being prepared being prepared you are being prepared and you have been preparing the way for your collective to sit at the table and okay <laughs> i'm gonna tell a little bit of a story that illustrates something to do with this energy you might not get really how it's connected at least not yet but let me just tell the story so <laughs> Um, this just came out. This just came out actually on the Leo New Moon. Uh, I was at my uh, back home with my parents. It was a family reunion, and my husband uh, like let slip a big secret. Like, it was a really funny one. Like it was like like a good thing. Um, so we used to live in this 50 year old piece of crap single wide trailer on the side of the highway for three years. This is how we lived. Um, it had like a leaky roof, you know, leaky plumbing. Um, a saggy floor it had no heating no air conditioning it was like it, it was it was a disaster right but anyway so the, this trailer had all these problems but apparently it also had a centipede infestation that I never knew about I never knew about this is my husband's big secret about how hey shy did you know back at the trailer that place was crawling with centipedes and he, like his confession was that he never told me about the centipede problem and, and I was like Oh my God, thank you so much. Like, oh my husband, thank you so much for never telling me about the centipede infestation because I'm pretty good with bugs. Like, I don't really, you know, I don't like them, but I don't mind them. You know, if I see a spider, I'll catch the spider, let it outside, like whatever. But I have a thing about centipedes and millipedes, right? And either, it's like, it's got, if it's got more than eight, eight legs, I'm out, right? And those long, creepy crawlies, blah, like I can't even think about them. I hate, I hate, I am so skeeved out by centipedes. I like, I can't, I can't deal with them. <laughs> So my husband knew that like, to just never tell me about the centipedes, but think I lived in this place for three years and I never saw a centipede. I never saw for three years, I did not see a centipede ever. And apparently this whole time he was like catching them and taking them outside and stuff. And like, I, I never even saw him do that. I never knew. And apparently my stepson knew about them too. And this whole time they just like kept this big secret from me of all these centipedes. And I was like, I almost couldn't believe it because I'm pretty aware of what's going on in my house. Like whenever, you know, the guys are doing something, I like, I always know what they're up to. They're always up to something and I always know what they're up to. It's like, I'm just, I'm just very, very aware of like what's happening in my house or like, so I thought, right? <laughs> so I thought, turns out that they kept this whole centipede secret for three years and never told me until now. Um, but so this story isn't so much about the secret keeping, that's maybe a side point here, but the thing is that this was something that I just, I never saw. That was allegedly, allegedly my, my home, allegedly my home was crawling with centipedes that's totally skeeved me out, but I never saw them. I never saw them. They were like invisible to me. This was like ignorance is bliss in the best kind of way. I never ever saw them. So to me, it was, it's like, well, like they were never there. The centipedes, as far as I'm concerned, were never in my reality. They were never in my reality. I coexisted with them side by side. Like these are centipedes. Uh, and apparently there were instances where like, there was one like right next to me or crawling right by me and like I would turn away and my husband would catch it like and I would never notice. It was like ignorance is bliss on a fantastic level. So I coexisted with centipedes and centipedes are like my greatest fear <laughs> like in terms of bugs in my house, right? Such a big fear. I coexisted with them. I never knew a thing about it. 
and then I moved and now I live in a centipede free zone and it, it, it feel it feel into that feel into that how you can live right next like right with something you can live with something and never know it you can live with something and never know it so you know, maybe like to hook this back into the Saturnian message from the beginning of like all these people's opinions and thoughts and feelings and including these thoughts and feelings that get into your head and like start going in your head, right? You can coexist with those as if they're centipedes, right? You can coexist with them and never know that they are there. You don't need to be noticing them. In fact, noticing them doesn't serve you, right? If my husband had like, you know, gone like honesty is the best policy and like, you know, we always tell each other everything. We don't have any secrets from each other. Well, then I would have known about the centipedes and I would have lived there for three years, totally skeeved out about the centipedes and always worried about them crawling on me. Like, how would that have been better for me? Like, I immediately thanked him for not telling me about the centipedes. It was like, why would I need to know? He was on it. He was trying to handle the centipede problem, whatever, right? Like, I, I didn't need to know. I did not need to know. So sometimes, we, we just, we don't need to know. Some, sometimes you need to know what you don't need to know, right? And this, like not knowing is protection, right? Sometimes not knowing is protection. So this is like, I feel like you're really being protected from something that you just, you don't need to know, you don't need to see, you don't need to hear about, right? You don't need to hear about literally being protected from like other people's energy, from other people's opinions, from other people's thoughts. Like, and, and it's like, even if it's like right there, even if it's right there, right next to you, you, you don't need to see it. You don't need to see it, right? You don't need to see it. <sighs> this is an interesting card. I don't know how to pronounce this. It's a Gaelic word. Heareth, heareth, hireth. Longing for home, homesick for the stars. This is a like quintessential starseed card, right? This is looking out at the stars and going, why is my home in the stars? How do I get back to my home, right? How do I get back to my home? But I feel like this is, I'm hearing in my head, like this is not the way, this is not the way, this is not the way, right? Um, so for some of you, another round of like what I would call like star seed, star seed healing, right? Star seed homesickness healing. We've all been in that place. Like I think every single star seed or like, let's say 99% of star seeds, right? Have been in that place where you feel so alienated, it's so alienated on earth and you just want to leave, right? Where you just want to leave earth. You just want to go home. But uh, this is not the way. This is not the way that's looping in my head. This is not the way. This is not the way. It's to discover that your home is here, to discover that your home is here. So about this round table, it's like, take your place at the round table. The round table is here on earth. Your place is here on earth. <laughs> the round table is here on earth. And this does not mean for you to feel alienated and homesick it, or to feel like it's to know, to know that your home is here, to know that your home is here. And I actually just pl played that out very interestingly because so, you know, I'm from Canada and I moved down to the U.S. to because my husband's American and this whole the symbolism of that like runs it hits me it, it's it's really deep right because I go south and cross the border I went down south and cross the border uh, like and it's this descent thing it's descending down into the border it's descending down into the southern lands it's descending down into a place that in my like I, I love living in the U.S. I, I'm not here to like say anything bad about this country right I have a really great life here and I love living here but like there is this thing where like everything in the U.S. is a little more like like intense and there's a little bit more chaos here so like it, it to me it mirrors the dissension journey from source, right? It, it mirrors this dissension journey of coming down into this place of chaos, coming down into this place of chaos. And it took me, it took me years, actually, it took me years of, I did never felt at home here, right? I didn't feel at home here. And when I said the word home, I would refer to my hometown. I would refer like back to Vancouver. I would refer, re, I would refer to Vancouver, Canada as my home. And an interesting thing just happened when I was just back home in, in you know, in Vancouver, in my hometown outside of the city. And every time I said the word home, I was referring to my home here in the U.S. Right? I was referring to my home here in the U.S. because that's where I live now. This is where my this is where my stuff is. This is where my you know my husband and my stepson and my animals are. This is my home. This is my home. And so there was a switch. There was a switch. There was like, and I saw that my parents noticed it, and they were perhaps a little bit weirded out by it, right? But I, I noticed 
this switch in what I thought of as my home, right? What I thought of as my home. I used to say, I want to go home, and I meant returning to Canada. And now when I say home, I mean down here, my home in the U.S. And I know that my home is going to move, right? I don't plan on living in where I live right now forever. I'm going to move to other places and home will change, home will shift, home will go with me, right? Home will go with me. I make my home wherever I go. So, you know, some of you maybe have had similar experiences, right, of like playing out the star, like the journey from source, playing out your soul's journey or playing out your starseed journey um, and like the transplantation of your home, um, playing that out in the physical that really like, like reflects and represents the your soul's journey, right, your soul's journey. And so there, there is like this... Um, potential right now for you to find your home and find that it is on earth right and that doesn't mean that it's going to be your home forever but you're, you're going to find your place here it's about finding your place here it's again it's the round table it's take your seat at the round table you have a, there's a place for you at the round table there is a chair at the round table with your with your name on it take your place and remember the table is round the table is round the table is round right? All are equal at the table. There is no, there is no elevated dais. There is no seat that is higher than any other. This is, this is a table of equals, right? This is a table of equals and right? The crowning, the crowning initiation thresholds, rebirth, oh, birth and rebirth, a seat at the table. Oh, cause I must've, I must've read that earlier, right? I must've read that earlier. I don't remember. You guys will know. I don't, <laughs> I don't, I don't remember. I don't remember. So anyway, clearly this message about the table, right? And it's like sit, claiming your seat at the table. That is your crowning. That is your crowning, but it is not a crowning that like elevates you above others. It's not about rulership over others. It is about being crowned in your own power, being crowned, being robed in your own power, being crowned by your own light, being crowned, crowned by your light and robed by your power. Take your seat at the table, right? Take your seat at the table. Surrounded by brothers and sisters. This, this Look at this energy, right? We have feminine and masculine energy coming through in balance here. We the Hathors, deep love, mother's milk, birth as a portal, Brothers of the Rose, sacred masculine, honor, protection, and support. This particular card, Brothers of the Rose, this is really similar to, what deck is this from, right? This is from the Rose Oracle. There's a similar card in the Starseed Oracle, which um, I think it's called Star Brothers, right? Star Brothers. These energies come through when... I'll say like your your soul siblings, your soul siblings, your soul siblings come through. This includes, okay, I gotta say Zetas for some people. I have to throw at Zetas. So the grays, the Zeta reticuli, the Zetas, um, like coming through like on a physical level for some people. So, okay, if you're not here to have anything to do with the Zetas, um, just bear with me for a moment, but I have to say something about the Zetas um, and for those who are connecting with them, which is many of you, very many of you, and including including some of you who are, are initially going to assume that you have nothing to do with the Zetas or the Greys, the same thing, right? The, gray, the, Z, the Zetas and the Greys, those refer to the same beings. You can use whatever word you want. Um, including some of you who think that, that you would have never have anything to do with them, no, like you do have something to do with them, that they are soul brothers to you and that they are literally on ships flying around <laughs> outside your house, right? Beaming energy down at you. Um, and they are not to, like not necessary to fear them. It is true that there are some uh, Zetas out there who are, are like negative in orientation and who have harmed humanity, uh, but that is not that's a small segment of them. Like, I know there's like a huge, huge thing about negative Zetas, like the bad grays, right? But that's not who I'm referring to here. I'm referring to the bulk of the population who is 
who are like benevolent Zetas, right? Benevolent Zetas. They, it, they are different from us. They are rather strange sometimes, but they are, for those of you that this message is for, they are your brothers, right? They are your brothers. They are your brothers. They are your brothers and they are connecting with you. And the thing about the Zetas is that, you know, they're, the way they connect with you might be different from the way that some others connect with you. Like if you're used to connecting with Pleiadian, Syrian, Arcturian, Hadarian, uh, that type of energy, that typically comes through like on the astral. It's It can be physical, but it it's like kind of like why bother why bother with the physical contact right they, they come through very much on like a spiritual energetic level um and so you know connecting with the zeta is different because they will they will come through like they are here physically they are here physically they are here physically in ships in physical bodies and they will hover outside your house you will never see them i mean it is possible that you can see them if you have if you've like agreed with them to have like a visual with them, but they will like, they clo you know, their, their ships are cloaked. We can't detect them with our technology, but they will hover up above your house. And if you go to the window or go outside, right? This, it doesn't have to be, they can communicate with you through the walls, but it like, it's like literally a beam. Like they use actual piece of physical technology to beam communication like to you. And it does work better. Um, through clear line of sight, like at, at the window or outside. Uh, like I'm saying this because I've experienced all of this. I have like a brother, Zeta, and he's not gray, right? People talk about them like they're always gray. They're not. Like my Zeta brother is blue. He's very blue. His skin is like almost like this shiny iridescent blue. Um, even has blue eyes, right? And so the, the, the pictures that you've seen, like drawings of them, is not necessarily what they all look like, right? Um, so my Zeta, my Zeta brother is blue. And if you ever like go up to, like, I've had weird experiences of like going up to the window and then like my brain will like check out. It's almost like, like almost like fainting or almost like falling asleep while standing still. And I've actually almost like fallen over. <laughs> um, it's because like they point, they point a beam at you and everything can fuzz out. Everything can fuzz out or you can get like a weird ringing in your ear, weird stuff. Um, these are, I'm just tossing out some slick signs that, you know, you might not notice, you might not know it's them. Um, but you can also connect with them, like, you know, mentally, right? Sitting in meditation or just kind of opening up, opening up to them. But they are very, uh, they don't want to scare you because they know that you probably harbor some type of um, hesitancy around connecting with them. So it, it, it's opening up and like allowing the connection and... Yeah, like I'm just taking a minute to tune in. They're like, we don't want to, we don't want to scare you. It's not necessary for you to see us. We don't want to scare you. It's not necessary for you to see us. Like they're saying, there's a lot we do behind the scenes. There's so much we do behind the scenes, and <laughs> they're actually like, we're watching you. <laughs> but but it's like, um, I know that might sound creepy, right? I know that might sound creepy, but it's like they they are like it's it's not so. I, I would retranslate that to say it's not that they're watching you, but although they are watching you, but they're watching over you. They're watching over you. They're watching over you. But <sighs> there is a lot about your connection with the Zetas that is not necessary for you to know at this time or at, in this lifetime however it is available for you to know if you wish to open up to the contact and the first step in opening up to further contact with your zeta brothers is that is dropping out of the fear of can like communicating with them dropping out of the fear of connecting with them dropping out of the fear because they don't want to scare you they don't want to scare you and they understand that you have an exquisitely sensitive emotional body and that your your emotions are actually beyond their understanding i mean they they have studied <laughs> the human emotional experience and they understand it intellectually but your emotional experience is beyond that of theirs so they do not like have a full like visceral understanding of your emotions they just understand that 
you have complex, you, you, all of you have, on some level have like complex feelings and emotional reactions to them. And so there needs to be like permission on your part, like give permission to yourself to kind of open up and work through these fears of connection, work through these fears of connection. And th then I was, I was like, how is this like weird? Like so random, so random, right? I don't typically like think about talking about starseed stuff, like really in depth in a random, like in a weekly reading, but that's what wants to come through. So that's clearly for someone. Um, and, that, and I was like, how is this related like to anything this week? But um, this is also on the Leo Aquarius axis, right? Um, here, what they're showing me is like, Zetas, they're very much an Aquarian energy because they're so mind-based. They're so mentalized and so into high technology to the point where like, you know, they like, I could say they lost their humanity, but it's not really obviously like they weren't human, right? But they were, they, they like lost the ability to like procreate physically, right? <laughs> they, they, they like lost parts of their bodies. They lost, um, emotional sensitivity and they have spent a lot a long time like regaining these things right regaining things these things so they're very very much like an Aquarian type of energy and they are what I'm what they're showing me right now like my one my one Zeta brother who is my only Zeta contact um he's showing me that they they see us the Zetas see humans as opposite to them so they are Aquarius and we are Leo right they are Aquarius and we are Leo that's how they see us that's like a they're saying like that's a really good you don't need to take like the zodiac equivalents to literally but that's a really good metaphor that's really good symbols for how we can see our relationship it's like we're opposite poles and so they are likely to come through more strongly um whenever the Leo Aquarius axis is being lit up. And so we're going up to the Aquarian full moon. So it's a really like, it's just a really easy time for you if you want to, to connect with to connect with them, to connect with them. Okay. So many different things is happening <laughs> so much. Um, just as an aside, I'm almost thinking, should I like, like cut this video up into pieces and like post it separately? Because it's, I feel like there's so many different messages here, but maybe I'll just put timestamps so that you can get the message that's for you. It's just, okay. And so to get the meta message here, right? The meta message, this is something that I practice where it's not just like, you know, reading the energy or reading the cards to get the message. It's also like reading myself and like reading the, the chaos of my thoughts, reading like the, like observing the way I'm talking and seeing like, like well, what, what, what is going on here? Because my way of being when I'm doing a reading is also a symbol that I can read. It is also a pattern that I can read to get the meta message. So the fact that I'm sitting here and this reading has contained like such holy, like, Messages that seem completely separated from each other, completely separated from each other, com completely disjointed, and yet they are united in one video. Isn't that also represented of, representative of the Leo Aquarian axis, right? Because you got Aquarius, which is all of these different parts all coming together in one constellation. And then Leo, which is like everything coming together in like the unity of one sun, right? The unity of one sun. So. on a higher abstract level, you're gonna be seeing that type of theme, things that seem completely unrelated. This could be, you could find yourself, I don't know, like sitting in a car <laughs> or on a trip or in a house or something with, with a group of people who like have like nothing in common, like nothing to do with each other. And you're like, why are we all together in this, right? How, how, how are, like what? <laughs> or you could be, watching a video like this and there's all these different messages and you're like, what? How are these all connected? Or you could like, if you read tarot yourself, right? You could flip up some cards and you could go, what? You know, cause sometimes you flip up some cards and you go, these don't appear to be connected in any way, right? Like, what's the message here? I don't understand why there's so many different messages. That is again, part of like, that's part of working the Leo Aquarius axis. That is part of working the Leo Aquarius axis of trying to figure out how do all of these random pieces come together and the thing is you don't necessarily need to figure it out it's not about figuring it out it's just about allowing the different parts to coexist 
Just allow them to coexist. You don't, you don't, you don't even need to connect the dots because the dots are already connected energetically, right? The dots are connected energetically. Like the universe is connecting the dots. You as it on a human level, you don't need to connect the dots. You just need to allow them to exist. Just allow them to exist so, like in the same spot. Just allow all of the random parts and pieces to exist in the same spot. So that also means um, your, your quest for understanding and your thirst for knowledge and your th so like <laughs> I'm laughing because like Scorpio moons Scorpio moons are not going to enjoy this because Scorpio moons are on like an eternal quest to like push the river like Scorpio moons don't like don't want to um ever let it go like a Scorpio moon will be like a dog on a bone like worrying it if like Scorpio moon wants to if they can't figure something out they never want to just set it aside. Scorpio moon wants to keep like chewing on it until they figure it out. And I mean, that is really like, cause that's like the investigative nature of Scorpio moon. And that's really cool and awesome. But, um, so if you happen to be a Scorpio moon watching this, ye, like for you specifically, this energy is going to be rather uncomfortable because it's going to ask you to just set aside your quest to understand just for a minute, right? Your time is going to come back around where you're going to be able to get to the bottom of something. But right now it, it's like, some things are simply going to be question marks. Some things you will never figure out. And specifically, some things like of how things fit together, you're never going to really understand. Um, maybe if you can really transcend to a much more abstract level, you might see how it all comes together. Um, kind of like by what I'm describing here, reading the meta message, right? Reading the meta message. You might be able to understand the meta message, but you will have to really go abstract, like way abstract, <laughs> way, way, way abstract. And on that level, that level of understanding, like, might not satisfy the human, but that's, that's where we're at. That's where we're at. So the final card, we, the Hathors, deep love, mother's milk, birth as a portal. And you know what I want to do here is actually just read that, the blurb and call, call it here. So before I read this, just to emphasize, like, allow randomness, allow randomness, allow random pieces to coexist. That includes inside of yourself, like, allow the random pieces of yourself to coexist. Allow random events and occurrences and people and energies around you to just exist and just like let it let it be let it be as much as we can because you can only do what you can do so do what you can do and that's all you can do <laughs> let's see birth is a portal that ushers in new life the Hathors are here to remind you that you're a child of the Cosmic Mother and you're being called to be held by her deep, never-ending love and embrace. This is a tender, nourishing card, reminding you to receive the deep, deep love of the Mother's embrace. The Hathors know that the journey on Earth can be rocky and lonely at times, but you're being reminded to rest more deeply in the Mother's arms. This is a card of extreme potency, of femininity, of creation, and of birth. You're being called to mother yourself and others too, to surrender to your sacred femininity, to create and surrender to your own creations, to hold and be held. You're being called to remember your place in the web of life and to realize that the Cosmic Mother is watching you every step of the way. You may be going through a transition right now, moving from one way of being to another. If so, you're being reminded that you're cradled in a sacred container, that you're more held than you can possibly imagine, and you have access to more love than your heart can bear. If you're struggling in any way, you're being reassured that things will work out. Open yourself to receiving the overflowing love of the Cosmic Mother, flooding towards you from every direction. Let it stretch your heart. I allow the deep love of the Cosmic Mother to wash over me. I am loved. I am held.